Hello there and welcome to uh, Technical Service 101's channel. This will be a new channel, uh, hopefully bringing you the latest in LED technology as and when it arrives on the market. Uh, what we've got for you today is a conversion on an old, uh, it's not actually a Budmaster unit, but it's an old Budmaster style unit. I think this is a cheap Chinese knockoff. And this video and the one to follow will cover the step-by-step -step dismantling and step-by-step -step conversion and reassembly process. Uh, you'll also have a few demonstrations. We will be demonstrating uh, this unit with the case removed and the mains attached. This is not something that anybody should uh, replicate at home any time that you take the cover off of these units. There are bare live terminals, so please make sure that you've completely disconnected it from the mains first. Okay, so we uh, we see the the original unit here this arrived at our door the on off switch had failed on it and uh, blown and subsequently the unit wasn't working uh, on off switch simply needed bypassing so that was uh, uh, we ran it for a little while to see how these uh, red blue units fare in the real world environment before conversion as you can see we've got uh, what should be six heat sinks there and six fans and six DC power supplies as you can see there, it's quite a bright unit, but uh, as you notice that the camera wasn't actually ranging down there as the unit was pointed straight at it, so uh, the camera was quite able to, to cope with the, uh, the power of those lights. Those fans that you can see are 12 volt fans, and each one of those LED units is a 72 volt DC unit. Each of these power supplies has a, uh, a 12 volt tap, and the 72 volt supply for the uh, the main LED. Now our replacement bulbs are going to be 32 volt, uh, sorry, 36 volt. Uh, so we're going to need to join our bulbs up in series to cater for the additional voltage. Uh, as you can see, it's a reasonably easy, uh, easily accessible unit. Uh, each of the six units is uh, individual. Uh, you can see small cable ties and that being de deployed as a. You need to be quite careful as you're cutting these. Obviously, uh, you only want to cut the cable tie and not the uh, uh, the casing of the wire or the wire itself. Twenty mil uh, M3 screws with a little uh, nylon top hat on them. That's just like a spacer piece. And as you can see, the uh, earth lead goes to that first unit. Um, that then carries the earth to the rest of the case and the rest of the units. I would suggest that the DC power, the uh, AC to DC power supplies are probably double earthed anyway and so aren't actually requiring of an earth connection so that earth will just simply be to control any uh, any uh, leakage from the DC. Okay so now we get to see the actual units as you can see they have a, a small aluminium sort of collator reflector, a thick glass lens and the aluminium uh, screw shroud Let me just clear the decks. And now you can see the disconnected unit still attached to its DC power supply. As you can see, there's two different leads there. One of those is the 72 volt, the other one's the 12 volt. And just temporarily power it back up so that you can see the unit here and again you'll notice that the camera didn't range down uh, didn't have to close its iris to deal with that sort of brightness which is a good indication of how much brighter the new units are when you see them so that's uh, the camera's quite capable of having that shined right in its right in its CCD and you can see that's a four bolt uh, or four screw mounting on the old LED 
the wiring for that is uh, a through wiring through the heat sink and you can see there's two solder points on the front of the um, the chip there Right, so there's a detail of the uh, the sort of holding ring for the uh, lens assembly. As you can see there, the um, fans are only held in by the two screws. And this is uh, same one of the same cob units, but fitted with one of the new Gen 3 Luxian LED replacements that we're using. This is being run from a, a variable voltage uh, 36 volt power supply that we use for testing purposes. And as you saw there, as soon as I turned the thing up, the iris had to uh, shut down on the on the camera, clearly indicating this is a, a much much brighter output. And these are absolutely tiny. I mean, as you can see there, that's sort of the size of a half p piece. Now you'll also notice that the new cob uh, holder is a two screw holder, where the old cobs were four screws direct into the heatsink. Okay, so we're just uh, going to complete the dismantling, pro dismantling process here. Make sure that you clip all of, uh, un uh, cut all of the uh, nylon ratchet locks. Again, being careful not to nip or pinch the cable in any way. Uh, if you do damage any of the insulation, you really should replace that section of cable or uh, apply some heat shrink or some appropriate insulative material. So best not to cut the wires if possible or the plastic covering you'll also notice in this initial layout that the uh, mains wiring is clearly identified by the mains wiring colors of the blue and the brown and the red and the black wires are indicating the DC we won't be maintaining those specific colour regimes on the, the return. But yeah, so obviously before uh, dismantling, before removing all the heat sinks, the uh, uh, lenses are screwed to the front of the case with a ring that's slightly larger than the hole. So those need removing before the heat sinks. What you won't see here is I've got a, a sort of plastic parts bins and bags just off camera there and all of the parts are being uh, carefully placed into their appropriate boxes. Uh, also I'll be uh, uh, making a much tighter edit of this. This is obviously um, a video intended for anybody that has similar sort of units or similar sort of uh, um, uh, conversions that they're considering so it'll be quite detailed uh, I'll be doing a much tighter edit of uh, much less detail just going into the the, uh, the basics of the conversion and uh, sort of if uh, uh, testing procedure I guess okay so as you can see we've now got the uh, the frame empty there's just the wiring loom in in place there um, the original brackets on the power supplies weren't done that weren't tightened up particularly tight uh, yeah as you can see you've just got a basic uh, positive and negative 240 volt going into two actually only five connector blocks and then the uh, mains is taken out individually down that bundle of brown and blue wires to each individual power supply unit so you can see each one of those power supply units has its own pair of blue and brown wires. Now these would have been uh, an incredibly cheaply made unit, so none of these uh, component parts are particularly high quality, but uh, uh, I always try and bear in mind the total energy um, input of any system, and it certainly has to be borne in mind that the, all of these aluminium castings, uh, plastic components and electrical components will have been uh, very energy hungry in their manufacture right here so what i'm showing you here is the exclusivity the uh, idiot proofing of the uh, plug system on the power supply there so basically the uh, the uh, uh, the fan wires 
had a uh, male plug on the on the uh, fan side and a female plug on the power supply side and the bulbs are the opposite way around so you can't possibly plug a bulb into a fan 12 volt or plug a fan into a uh, 72 volt bulb uh, connector same connectors just uh, applied in opposite directions so we will actually be uh, removing the 72 volt ones there but obviously this needs to be borne in mind so just a basic dismantling, dismantling of the individual units having removed them all these uh, threaded rings are just held on by two countersunk screws and those countersunk screws there is a slight standoff between the that ring and the case so an ordinary screw would go back in there but you're better off uh, keeping those countersunk screws handy because it's uh, certainly the better way of mounting them cob here just uh, mounted with those four corner screws again M3 all the way around on this particular unit uh, that's a three millimeter metric thread for those that aren't familiar with M3 uh, categories stubby fingers on little screws excuse the time it takes uh, worth mentioning here as well that these heat sinks uh, have been quite roughly made at the factory and uh, their edges are pretty sharp uh, certainly uh, could be worth considering doing this job with uh, uh, some sort of work gloves on if you've got particularly delicate hands I mean uh, I managed to cut myself at one point in the procedure but fortunately my hands are like leather so uh, I'm fairly naturally protected but uh, if you've got slightly finer skin than mine, you may well be prudent to wear gloves during the, all of the operations you see here. So as you can see there, the cob was bonded down by this sort of um, rubberized, uh, I assume that that's some kind of a thermal compound. Uh, certainly appears to have sort of melted on the back of the cob. And in this case, we can just simply disconnect the two wires from there. We won't be reusing those. As you can see, the original wires passed through from the back and then soldered onto the front. Yeah, that's what I think of those. Okay, so now is all we're left with is the two corner screws on the uh, fan. As you can see, these are best accessed with a, a small watchmaker's screwdriver through the hole above. You won't be able to fit a, a big screwdriver into there, so uh, it probably will fit a, a small uh, cross-head screwdriver, but uh, yeah, the... As you can see, it's quite a tight fit there on just a small watchmaker screwdriver. So, very few tools actually needed for this particular job. There's a uh, a few specifics in the engineering side later, but yeah, working on a <laughs> a drum stall isn't exactly an ideal workbench environment. You'll be seeing my tools sliding out of view all the time. Uh, they're the slightly fatter screws that uh, hold the heatsink on. They're probably M4s. And as you can see there, that you've got a, a different face on the front and on the back. You've got the bracket there that holds the, the motor in place on the back and the bare blade on the front. And when I find it, there it is. You have an arrow marked for direction of rotation and of direction of airflow. In this case, it's towards the, metal, the uh, bracket for the motor. The two original wires pass through those two holes and just simply slide those out. Put those to one side even though we won't be reusing them. And now that just leaves us this uh, black rubber schmoo to have to scrape off. Now obviously we're not wanting to uh, gore up the, the shiny surface of the heat sink because that's our uh, thermal contact area for our new cob which does generate a significant amount of heat at that boundary so as you can see very gently taking the bulk of it off having left it unscratched and then resorting to a wooden scraper 
just for the final cleaning off of the schmoo. So, as you can see, quite a lot of uh, that thermal compound is still caught in the fins, plus, uh, yeah, as you can see, enough dust from the previous service. So, good to get in there with a the brush, get that one out. If you've got an air duster, perhaps give it a squirt. And there's an acceptably clean heatsink, ready for remachining. And this is just a repeat of the same dismantling process. Again, just to remind you that these are countersunk screws and different to all of the other screws, so worth noting what they look like and putting them in somewhere safe ah, there we go don't know how well that picks up on the uh, on the camera there but that, I can assure you they are uh, very short little specific countersunk M3s machine crosshead machine screws and the reason why I suggest that uh, it's worth reusing those countersunk screws is because as you can see the holes are also countersunk so the screws have a degree of uh, centering on that ring and uh, some of the tolerances later on are quite close. Again, the cob removal process. Obviously, uh, removing a, a, an old used cob, you're not too worried about uh, uh, tension in the, in the unit, but generally speaking, when working with these cobs, it's best to uh, undo everything diagonally, so diagonal opposite corners, uh, and undo just kind of uh, crack the tension off the the screws first to release any any sort of um, uh, any sort of bending tensions in the unit uh, you want to be reasonably careful prying these off of here they are stuck down quite well and you don't want to damage the surface of the uh, heat sink particularly same deal as last time just snip those wires short and that one gets filed in the bin department in fact they weren't filed in the bin department we may deploy those in some later fitment but really they're such low efficiency it would be hard to think of when or where maybe there's some sort of auxiliary lighting uh, under driven so that it doesn't use so much wattage So again, as you can see, just the two screws holding the heat sink in. Remember that those are the uh, M4 screws, slightly larger than the others. And again, removing and stowing the uh, wiring and connector. Carefully working in from the outside. Uh, obviously, the heat sink outside of the cob. Uh, area is of less importance so I'm just working my way around and as you can see that just slid off nicely uh, if this had a uh, regular thermal compound on there then just a uh, uh, tissue and uh, maybe a little bit of spirit wipe is what you'd need okay so here's a cleaned off cob and now we're looking at the uh, actual remanufacturing or re-engineering issues so these cobs as you can see have a four square uh, screw pattern and the cobs that we're using uh, cob holders rather that we're using have a two screw pattern now as you can see there's no way of actually mounting that two screw pattern to those old holes by both screws so we make up this uh, metal template this is made out of quite thick steel and we through drill from an old cob to get the four excuse me looking at the monitor and back to front so you get those the four corner holes of the original cob and then from those corner holes you can mark a centre line 
and by diagonalizing you can double check that your center lines exactly in the right place and what I actually did here was I used a sacrificial cob holder to uh, mark out the uh, new holes accurately and what you need there is a two and a half mil uh, high speed spill high speed steel bit for the uh, screw mounts and as you can see they are 2.5 mil holes and this is because we're only wanting the clearance for that size drill and not for the actual bolts we wouldn't be looking to bolt through these smaller holes that's just simply the uh, um, uh, the alignment for the uh, the, the uh, to be threaded holes the, tap, the holes that we're going to need to tap so you can see there, one's a like, three and a half mil hole, the other one's a, a two and a half mil. And this may seem like a bit of an unnecessary step, but I found uh, the um, screw hole spacings on those cob holders to be quite a tight tolerance. And on previous efforts to uh, uh, simply mark out by hand each of the pairs of holes that needed drilling, uh, it was quite easy to fall out of the sort of uh, uh, somewhere around 5 mil tolerance, a point five of a mil of tolerance that you get on the, the positions of the screw holes. And really you want those because you don't want to be flexing that cob holder. It's uh, ideal to have those screw holes uh, dead centre of the, uh, the holes in the cob holder. Okay, so as you can see, just mounting that plate from the uh, the same four mounting screw holes that the previous cob had come out of. And this essentially assures us that when we drill through the smaller holes with the smaller drill, that our holes are uh, both uh, meticulously positioned for that particular set, but also duplicatable because we need to uh, do this six times over. Okay, and securing the template. Uh, which is made out of quite thick gauge steel securely to the cob uh, to the uh, heatsink rather and as you can see that makes a nice tight location for those 2.5 mil holes again uh, we're working to quite fine tolerances here on these small M3 bolts it's only a, a 0.5 of a mil uh, thread and a 0.5 of a mil gap around the uh, mounting holes so relatively tight Okay, so uh, that's the end of the dismantling process and just showing you what we've got in the box. Uh, the next video will be slightly longer uh, and will feature the, the remachining of the heat sinks, the adaptations required to the electrics and the reassembly and testing procedure. Thank you for joining us on Technical Service 101. Uh, the reassembly video will be uploaded online very shortly. Thank you.